Alright, so I know that Attack on Titan, or Shingeki no Kyojin, whichever name you prefer for it, I know that that ended several months ago, and that I am behind the curve on this. But I just finally got around to finishing off the manga. Like, I read it for years and years, and then a while ago, I can't point to a specific reason why, but I just kind of lost interest in it, and so I stopped reading for a while, and then I heard that it ended, so I put it off for a little while, but I managed to avoid spoilers, and I finally finished it off. And so, I think it was a really solid ending. Not not perfect by any means, but the series as a whole was really, really great, and I kind of just... I, I wanted to talk about it, so here I am. Let's go. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So I'm going to split this into three brief sections. There'll be a really short non-spoiler section, uh, for people who have not read it or watched the anime at all. And then I'm going to do a minor spoiler section because there are some really big twists early on in the series that, like, it's basically impossible to talk about at the whole series as a whole uh, without going into detail on those, and I don't want to ruin that for anybody who doesn't want to get into this. So we'll have that, and then we'll have a major spoiler section where I talk about the ending. So Attack on Titan takes place in a world like a hundred years after these things called titans appeared, and titans are basically just giant naked humans. Uh, most of them are, or at least the biggest of them, are around 15 meters tall, some of them are smaller than that, and humanity lives in this walled-off area. Like, they have these three giant circular walls, one inside the other, uh, that they live in, and then one day, this kid named Aaron Yeager, just a regular kid who lives near the outermost wall, uh, this colossal titan appears, which I know that sounds redundant, but it, this one is m multiple times larger than the others. It smashes a hole in the wall, and then all the other titans pour in, and so humanity loses its entire outer wall of defense. And in all the chaos, Eren's mother is killed, his father vanishes, he doesn't know what happened to him, and so Eren just is really pissed off, and he decides, you know what, I'm gonna murder every last titan in existence. And from there, the story unfolds in a lot of different directions. Um, one of the really, really great things about this series that I think attracted so many people to it when it first came out, because I remember when the anime first came out like eight years ago, it was huge with people my age, uh, even those who weren't normally huge into anime, because it was just really grim and violent and dark. Like, this was humanity's last stand as it fought against extinction, and so every moment of fear and panic feels genuine. And... The characters are, they don't really have, like, superpowers, they can't shoot lasers from their hands or anything like you would normally expect from a shonen manga. They're, for the most part, just regular humans, and they have some really cool equipment and stuff that they can use. Like, they have this stuff called, I I've seen it translated as both 3D maneuver gear and omnidirectional maneuver gear, but it's basically, they have two swords, and they have hooks uh, on their belts, and they can shoot hooks out to, like, fly around the city, almost like Spider-Man swinging around. It's, it's, it's really neat. And they can use that to kill Titans, but even with training and omnidirectional maneuver gear and cannons and all that, Titans are still extremely difficult to kill. And so when they go into battle, people die left, right, and center. And so, uh, every moment of fear and panic feels genuine when it comes about, and there are a lot of moments where beloved characters die, or maybe beloved's not the right word, but there are uh, a lot of moments where minor and major characters die, and they might not all be super well-developed or anything, but watching them get literally torn apart and eaten alive is still horrifying. The story is really, really fast-paced, um, except for a couple parts, but those mostly come later. Like, early on, it's there's always something happening, there's tons of little twists and turns about what's going on, and there's a lot of mystery about the nature of the world and, like, what the Titans are, where they came from, and so that really kept me going throughout the, the early part of this series, both the anime and the manga. And while a lot of the side characters are not super memorable, uh, most of the main cast is really solid. Like, Eren himself, He's kind of brooding and moody and has a tendency to, like, get angry and blow up in people's faces, but it's kind of justified because, you know, we see the shit he's gone through in his life that led up to this point. And um, beyond that, he's not just some hero who says, I want to save my friends, I want to protect the world. Like, no, he wants to go out and murder every last titan in existence. So he has 
a very clear-cut goal from the beginning, and that does change over time as we understand more about this world, but he's a very focused character, and that's something that I feel a lot of protagonists lack, especially shonen protagonists. Uh, and so seeing that was just really great. And honestly, I can apply that to the series as a whole. Like, this is still a shonen manga, uh, but it doesn't really feel like a traditional one at the very least. And so that uh, helps set it apart. And I really wish that we would see more stuff like this, more, more stuff that's a little more mature and yada yada. And so I think that's it uh, for the non-spoiler section. If you have not heard anything about Attack on Titan and you're interested in it, I would recommend checking it out, like either the anime or the manga, because they're both pretty good, in my opinion. Um, the only real criticism I have of the manga that isn't spoiler-related is that I'm not a fan of the artwork. Something about it, I don't know, like, the terminology for it, but it seems like a lot of the characters and everything are... they don't have, like, really defined borders around their silhouettes, and so they kind of fade into the background sometimes. And that works great for action scenes, it really does, but when it's just dialogue scenes or something, it doesn't work great. And on a related note, a lot of characters do have same face syndrome, because it's such a large cast, so there's people who get, like, introduced, and for a moment I'll think, wait, is that someone else we already know? No, no, okay, that's a new person, they just, they just look too similar, so that's annoying, but on to minor spoilers. Holy shit, is that a titan? You know, I heard they'd be naked, but that's a lot more naked than I expected. Okay, so minor spoiler stuff. The first half of this series is absolutely phenomenal. The second half is still really good, but it does slow down quite a bit more because, you know, Eren gets his Titan powers, or at least he finds out about having his Titan powers, and everyone's like, what the fuck is, th how does this even work? What's going on? And he doesn't know how these powers work, where they came from, anything like that. And so uh, just the process of him learning about that is really great. And even once he gets mastery over his powers, and even later he starts gaining more unique powers, he's never... Uh, how do I put this? He's never too strong, I don't think. Like, there's never any points where he can just blow through his enemies with with uh, no problems. Like, all of... Not, not just Eren, but all of the other Titan shifters as well, like the Colossal Titan, and the Armored Titan, and the others that show up, they all have uh, weaknesses. They, they all have ways that they can be defeated if they're not careful. So both the heroes and the villains have to be kind of tactical in their battles, and that's, that's always a lot of fun. Uh, one issue is that uh, in the early series, like, regular Titans are absolutely terrifying, especially in that uh, first real battle where Eren is killed. Uh, but... Uh, how, how, just as time goes on and he can turn into the Assault Titan whenever he wants, or not whenever he wants, but most of the time, and uh, we start being introduced to more characters like uh, Levi, who regular Titans are nothing to him. Uh, I, I like Levi, he's super badass, but you know, <laughs> regular Titans are absolutely nothing to him. So they become less scary over time, and for a, for a while, yeah, that does make the series a bit less... it lacks that dark intensity factor that it had at the beginning, where, like I said, every moment of fear and panic felt genuine, but this part, from, from this point on, it just doesn't quite have that. Uh, it, until we hit another really big twist, uh, I'd say about three quarters of the way through the whole series, which I'll leave that for major spoilers again, but like, the nature of the world completely warps uh, when that happens, or at least your perception of the nature of the world, but that's kind of semantic, whatever. Uh, the point is, uh, from this point on, Aaron continues to get more and more uh, developments. Like, he realizes, okay, I can't just go out and start killing Titans with no purpose. Like, I have to uh, work with other people, I have to learn to rely on them, and I also have to get better so that they can rely on me. Uh, and he kind of calms down a little bit. He's still very focused and very driven, but he calms down a lot, and I liked that. Um, there is a whole story arc... Because, like, the government of Attack on Titan from the beginning is implied to be extremely corrupt, and it's also implied that they know a lot more than they're letting on about, like, where the Titans came from and how the walls were constructed and all that. And so there's a really long story arc about halfway through the series where they, um... 
well, I, sure, why not? This is a minor spoiler. The, the main characters have to try to work to overthrow their government and replace it with a better one, which, I mean, that sounds good on paper, but it just lasts a bit too long. And that's something I would say for a lot of parts of the series, is that they just outstay their welcome a little bit, like, especially the climax, uh, the, the last, eh, let's say, 20 chapters, I think really only needed to be 10 or 11 chapters. Uh, and granted, there's a lot of action and everything, which is really cool, but it's like they keep introducing new scenarios. And it's like, okay, now we saved the day. Wait, no, we didn't. Okay, now we saved the day. And that's a little obnoxious. And that sort of thing happens a lot during the overthrow the government arc as well. And part of the reason for this is Attack on Titan's really weird plot structure. Uh, or maybe not really weird, but sometimes what they'll do is they'll show events, like they'll show some crazy event happening, and then they'll show flashbacks for a while to show what, lead, what led up to that. And then they'll just go normal for a while, and then crazy event, and then flashback to show what went up to it. And that means we spend a lot of time on flashbacks, not all of which are always needed. Uh, most of the time it's fine, but there are a couple of flashbacks where I just go, eh, we, we, we really didn't need that to be there. Like, uh, if you remember in my manga I like and dislike video, I mentioned one called Witch Hunter. That one has a similar structure, and it's not great, if I'm being honest. Like, if you want to do that once or twice in a long series like this, that's fine, but they do it a lot more than that. And so, overall, the first half of this series is... Well, it's better than the second half, but not by a lot, uh, at least in terms of plotting. Now, once we get to that part that I mentioned where your whole perception of the world shifts, uh, things do start to get a little more intense again because you realize how much danger all these people are in. Like, something I've noticed in a lot of things is that when you open up a story in this strange, mysterious world, and you don't understand that much about the world or how it works, and the characters don't understand that much about how it works, and finding out uh, these mysteries is their driving uh, desire, I guess, their, their driving motivation, that's the word, and it's super dangerous and you don't know what's going on, then that beginning part is really great, and it's super tense and yada yada. It, it's really fun, and I noticed the same problem with Kingdom Hearts, actually. Uh, but then... Later on, once you understand at least part of all this, you don't necessarily need to know everything, but once you start to explore more of the world and it becomes less mysterious and less scary, you lose that intensity factor. Like in Kingdom Hearts, this is uh, when you first do the whole Destiny Islands thing and then you go to Traverse Town and Sora gets separated from his friends and he's like, what the hell's going on? What are all these Heartless attacking me for? Why do I have this Keyblade? And then uh, later on, he starts to learn more about, oh, okay, all these Disney worlds are out there, and these Disney villains are doing bad things, and then Ansem shows up, and so the world, while it does still have mysteries to it, is no longer as scary as it once was, because it doesn't feel as big as it once was, and Attack on Titan has that for a while, but then once you find out what's in the basement, it shifts again, and everything's scary again. So overall, if you're a person that has uh, read or watched some Attack on Titan, but for whatever reason you just haven't continued, I would recommend you continue because the series, it, it is about more than just fighting Titans. You know, it's not just, oh, Titans are attacking, let's fight them off. Oh, Titans are attacking, let's fight them off. You know, it's not like The Walking Dead or zombie stuff like that. Uh, there is a lot of interpersonal conflict between uh, various factions in like the government and the military and things like that, which are much more intelligent. You know, people can't just brute force their way through it or come up with uh, smart battle strategy or anything like that. They have to actually work with people and find out how to convince people of their uh, ideals, I suppose, and they have to, well, politically maneuver stuff. And it's actually done really well for the most part. It's just outstays its welcome a little bit. And um, like I said, there's a lot of characters who die. No one ever really feels that safe, except for like the core cast, but that's pretty common in most forms of media. And so, all the minor spoiler stuff, yeah, I just, I still recommend this series. It's really good, it's not a traditional shonen. it's pretty mature in a lot of ways. Go check it out. You, uh, you know what's a real good way for burning off calories? 
Okay, so now as for the ending, uh... <laughs> okay, I, I cannot sit here and explain all of the exposition for the ending because we're gonna be here all fucking day, so I'm just going to do this assuming that you also have read slash watched up until the end of the series because th there's, there's just too much there. So once Aaron gets the power of the Founder Titan, he decides, yeah, I'm gonna do the rumbling where he releases all the Colossal Titans in the walls and he's just gonna destroy the entire world. He's gonna kill everybody who isn't on Paradise Island so that he can save his friends, save his people. And then his friends have to go to great lengths to stop him. And even then, they don't manage to stop him all the way. He, he still wipes out a substantial portion of the planet's population. And that really sucks. But then it turns out at the end that he was like, no, I'm just gonna kill a bunch of people, and then my friends are going to kill me in the process, which will make them seem like heroes, and because they're Eldians, it'll make people not hate Eldians that much. Which is stupid. And then uh, the series ends with Aaron being dead, uh, and the the world is not exactly at peace anymore, because, or anymore, not exactly at peace because the ultra-hardcore ethno-nationalist Eldians took control of Paradise Island and the rest of the world knows that the Eldians attacked them and almost killed all of them and just because some some of the the good ones as they might call them came along and saved them they might not necessarily uh, still like Eldians they're probably still going to hate them so that bit's kind of stupid and so the series doesn't have a complete happy ending which I do like uh, I do like how it's like, okay, things, we saved the day that one time, but things are still not great right now. We're still going to have to do a lot of work to make things work out properly. So, yeah, I did like that aspect of it. I just wish it had been thought out more. Because here's the thing. Even with uh, the technology that they've been able to steal slash build over the past couple of years, the Eldians on Paradise Island are still at a huge disadvantage uh, than compared to everybody else. And everybody else still controls most of the uh, special titans, I forget what they're called, but like the Assault Titan and the Warhammer Titan and the Armor Titan, all that. They still control most of them. And, uh, well, there aren't that many titans left uh, to to use, like regular ones to use, to just throw at, the, at anybody, really. And so the world has calm down for the moment, but it seems like it's just going right into another conflict. So it seems like Aaron killed a whole bunch of people for no reason, and then sacrificed himself for very little reason. This reminds me of the ending of Code Geass, in a way, which is one of my favorite anime, I'll fully admit to that, where Lelouch takes over the whole world and makes himself like an evil tyrant, like the most evil tyrant of all time, and then lets himself be killed so that people will unite around that. They'll be like, yes, we hate this guy, we're all united, now that he's gone, all everything's great. Which really doesn't work that well in real life, but at least it was set up in a way, in such a way in the show where it does make more sense. Like, because in real life, for example, World War II, the Axis powers, everybody hated them, uh, but then when they came together and defeated them, the Cold War happened right after. They weren't friends forever. One thing I do have to add about this ending is that some people have accused it of being fascist, and no, I, I, I really don't think it is, because the ethno-nationalist Eldians are pretty much portrayed, they're, they're the bad guys. You know, they want to wipe out the entire world at the end, and uh, the good guys, the main characters, have to fight to defeat them. And when they were uh, mostly successful, they killed, like, what was it, four-fifths of the entire planet they killed? Or maybe it was just that one continent, I'm not totally sure. But they killed a lot of people, and th they're unequivocally the bad guys there. And likewise, you have the other uh, groups like the Marleans and the other people who like hate the Eldians and oppress them like crazy. L like they, they are explicitly drawn and treated... Uh, to, they're drawn in such a way to evoke imagery of the Holocaust, is what I should say. Like. They wear armbands with stars on them, like they're forced to do so. They're forced to live in these little ghettos and they can only leave with uh, a specific permission. 
Uh, at one point near the end, they're in a train and they're fleeing the rumbling trying to get somewhere safe. And it just shows this one panel of the inside of the train, which looks exactly like the inside of a cattle car, like the trains that would get sent to Auschwitz and shit. So it's pretty clear that mistreating people based on like their ancestry or ethnicity, however you want to put that, is portrayed as a bad thing. Uh, whereas fascism is usually like, there is a hierarchy of people and being part of one group just automatically makes you better than being part of other groups. It's a lot like racism, and in most cases it is just straight up racism, but it's not quite the exact thing. Like, sometimes this is based on like religion or wealth or something like that. Well, it's always based on wealth, let's be honest. But that is a pretty fascist ideal, and this series is like an, a straight up refutation of that. So no, the ending is not fascist. Uh, and as for like the actual climax, like the fighting and all that, I think that is amazing because the last like 30 chapters of the series is just like constant, bam, something's happening, something crazy's happening, something crazy's happening. And the heroes never get out of their, uh, what, whatever situations they're in easily. Like there's not a single point where they just get out uh, with no sacrifices and with no trouble. Like that, that does not happen. Uh, every time they run into trouble, they have to use ingenuity to get out of it. And a lot of times they lose people along the way. Like this is one of those climaxes where a whole lot of characters die, like both side characters and major ones. And so it's, it's a bit heavy to read through sometimes. Like I said earlier, I do kind of wish it had been trimmed down a bit because, you know, you have that big battle between the Marlians and the Eldians at uh, Shigan Shina, and then Eren gets the Founder Titan, and they defeat all the Marlians, and so, like, the day's saved, but then the rumbling happens, and they go off to destroy everything, so they're like, oh, okay, we have to, we have to go and save everybody. And they're like, okay, maybe we can get ahead of it with this airplane that we have. So they're like, okay, let's go to that airplane. But then uh, that is being held by soldiers who want to destroy the world, uh, the hardcore Eldian nationalists. They're usually called Jaegerists. Um, it's being held by them, so we have to come up with a plan to get past them, and then we have to fight past them, and we lose people along the way, and that that's all difficult, and that takes up time. And then they get ahead of it uh, a little ways, and it's like, oh, we run into more trouble, Let's, uh, which is kind of bullshit in some ways. Like, apparently a soldier held on to the side of their boat for, like, the days it took them to get to uh, wherever they were going, and then he shoots at them, and he doesn't even do that much damage, really. He just hurts their plane a little bit, and they manage to patch it up. It's it, it's kind of dumb and doesn't really lead anywhere. And then they finally get to uh, fighting the founder titan, let's call it, and all the rumbling, and they're fighting it, and it looks like, oh, we won, and everything stops. And then it's like, oh, no, we're still going. Like, it, it just, they could have cut it down quite a bit. And one really annoying bit as well is how in order to give like a face to all the civilians that are civilians and innocent soldiers, semi-innocent soldiers, let's say, because we don't know exactly what they've been doing uh, uh, the past couple of years. But anyways, uh, all these civilians and soldiers who don't want to die in the rumbling, it, they need to give a face to that. So they just sh keep cutting back to Annie's dad among them. And problem is that Annie's dad is introduced like right as the rumbling starts and we don't know that much about him. We certainly aren't attached to him before this point. So, like, I don't care that much. You know, like, it's it would almost be better if it was like, hey, we just need to save these faceless crowds. Because there is a scene where, like, we see this infant all wrapped up. Uh, and it's in a crowd of people trying to flee. Or rather, it's mom is carrying it in a crowd of people trying to flee from the rumbling. And they reach the edge of a cliff. And people start getting pushed off because others are trying to just move away from the Titans. And the mom, uh, like, just holds the infant up and other people start grabbing it and passing it back. And mom, like, gets pushed off the cliff. More people behind her keep getting pushed off. And so, like, this one faceless baby, or not faceless per se, but this one baby who we know nothing about, I think that just does the job a lot better. And it takes up a lot less time than Annie's dad because... It's kind of like the ending of Amazing Spider-Man 2, where like Electro shuts down all the power, and there are two planes that are about to crash into each other, but they don't know it. And it's like, oh, we have to save the people on the planes, but we don't know anybody on the planes. So instead it keeps cutting back to Aunt May in the hospital. 
but Aunt May's not even really in any danger, so it's just weird. Like, if you were going to do something like that, you should have just put a character we like, such as Aunt May, on the plane. But really, most of that is pretty nitpicky. I'll, I'll be totally honest. It's not that big a deal. I really, really liked Attack on Titan. I, I am not afraid to admit that. It's a pretty great series. Um, even if you have heard about this ending here, you're, and you haven't read the series, you're probably very confused about all the terms and everything I just used, and I'd say, hey, check out the rest of the series so that you know what's going on, because <clears throat> just trying to learn all of the uh, mysteries behind all this is really compelling, and if you don't already know it, then it'll probably still surprise you a lot of the time. And there, it's just a good story. You know, it's well-paced for the most part. Uh, it's very tense, very action-heavy, action-packed but that's not all there is to it. <clears throat> a lot of the characters are really likable, uh, and even the ones that aren't necessarily likable are still good. And it takes place in kind of an interesting world. I think that once you get into the world outside the walls, it's a little bit lazy, but it's not too bad. Like, just overall, I really liked Attack on Titan. It's been like an eight-year journey of my life before I got to this point, and I'm a little upset with myself that I didn't get caught up earlier and finish it off earlier, but hey, I'm here now. Hello to of Patreon of to the people ten dollar and up. Apo Savalane and Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodis, Carolina Clay, Christopher Quinten, Echo, Great Grebo, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, KR Stevenson, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Madison Lewis Bennett, Marilyn Roxy, Microphone, Moritz Fux, Sad Mardigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, and Ve Victus. You of, to be grateful, uh, want to, of, to patron request, please help channel grow, subscribe, and like video. Bye.